Good morning from New York City. Today is Thursday, October 17th. Of course, I didn't show up last week and I've been having the negative self-talk and I went back and listened to what I said on the kickoff of season three and sure enough, I'm talking about how we speak towards ourselves. As it turns out, my negative self-talk is getting in the way of progress. If you've listened to me in past seasons, I think I hit my groove several times. And when we're trying to do something, whether it's develop a writing practice, a yoga practice, a meditation practice, it all comes down to showing up consistently. That's what the word practice means. I used to roll my eyes when people say, oh, my yoga practice, my meditation practice. But it's a very powerful word because when you show up, that's when you invite the flow state. I'm completely out of the flow of putting my thoughts into words. And I want to give myself the grace to fumble a little bit here. So here I am trying again. There are many things popping into my head. And in fact, one of my listeners, Cynthia from Denver, said, I'd love to see what would happen if you didn't edit yourself because part of the onus of producing Dear Constance is the editing process and trying to get it just right. And in fact, I'm one of those people who says things, who often has ideas and then realizes they weren't so good. I get a lot of things wrong and I'm okay with that. I'm a verbal processor. So moving along, I'd like to go back to a couple of things that popped out for me when I was listening to the interview between Tim Ferriss and Liz Gilbert. It's something I mentioned in episode one, if you didn't listen to it. I love that interview and there are a couple things I think worth sharing with you. First up is something that came up early in the interview, and it was this question that she asks herself, and I love it. It's how are you complicit in creating the conditions you say you don't want? Let me say that again. How are you complicit in creating the conditions you say you don't want? This is a question that I'm noodling a lot, and you can take it in many different directions. You can think about it in terms of what's annoying you with your partner or your children. You could even think of this in terms of business. What kind of clients are you attracting? What kind of employees are you attracting? This could even be valid if you're feeling like your life is messy right now or you're out of control. How are you complicit in creating those conditions that you say you don't want? It's funny, I'm thinking to myself, here I am going back to those questions. At one point, I don't know in which season of Dear Constance, I was ending a lot of the episodes with a question, or I think I even had a day of the week when I was offering a question, because questions activate your subconscious. I love the work of the poet David White, W-H-Y-T-E. He talks a lot about beautiful questions, questions that don't have a linear response. I'm not sure how he talks about this exactly. I can't remember. But beautiful questions are about posing a question that doesn't have an immediate answer. Questions can be a way to prompt ourselves to let our mind wander. It's almost like an invitation that we give to ourselves to think differently or to be open to other possibilities. I can't remember in my previous episode if I talked about this thing that Liz Gilbert refers to as two-way prayer. This isn't necessarily a religious thing. It's about whatever you think is out there in the universe, your God, your guides, your angels, however you refer to it. It really doesn't matter. She talks about the fact that we often ask for answers with questions that begin with why. Why is this happening to me? Why me? And I love the way she thinks about questioning in her quiet practice. One of the things she says is, what do you want me to do next? What is the right next action? I thought that was really beautiful. Another one I loved is, who do you want me to be in this moment? And when things are fraught, how do you want me to move through this? For some reason, these questions really stayed with me. I love them. So while we're on the theme of questions, the last thing that she said that really got me thinking was, what are three things I need to be relaxed? And I added, and trusting. What are three things I need to be relaxed and trusting? 
Her answer was boundaries, priorities, and mysticism. If I had to say this right off the top of the head, the first thing that comes up for me is quiet. My awareness practice is absolutely fundamental. The quiet is very tied to presence. It's important to me to be present in my life, present in my relationships, and to catch myself when I go on cruise control in my thinking patterns, in the way I'm living my life. And that leads to my second thing that I need to be relaxed and trusting. And it's about conscious choice, intentionality, if you will. If you've listened to me in the past, you know that choice is a very important word in my vocabulary. We always have the power to choose, to choose how we think, to choose how we respond. And as I often say, choose, choose again. It's very tied to this idea that we always have agency and it's natural to feel like the world is happening to us. And it's really important to bring it back to yourself and to remember that we have agency. So yeah, my second thing, I guess, would be intentionality, conscious choice, whatever you want to call it. I think for me, the third thing would be connection. Connection is what fuels my inner world. It helps me see the world differently. It's an opportunity to share my love and to feel loved. Connection gives me meaning. It gives me energy. Connection brings me alive. So yeah, I'm going to keep thinking about this, but right off the top of my head, I would say quiet, conscious choice, and connection. I'd be curious to hear what some of you come up with. I'm going to end today with a beautiful screen grab that I discovered in my phone this morning, and it's this. May your life be filled with risks that work out, adventures that change you, dreams that come true, people who love you right, and friendships that last a lifetime. I just love that. May your life be filled with risks that work out, adventures that change you, dreams that come true, people who love you right, and friendships that last a lifetime. So there you have it. Until next time, from my heart to yours.